In this video, I'm going to show you the correct and different ways of updating an object state in React. Before I dive into the examples, I'll quickly brief you on the concept of mutation. So consider the detail object state here. It has two properties, name and age. There's a button here which is supposed to change the detail on click and the name and age of the detail object is displayed here. Now one important thing to remember here is you shouldn't change objects that you hold in the react state directly. Instead, when you want to update an object, you need to create a new one or make a copy of an existing one and then set the state to use that copy. So basically, you should treat objects in JavaScript as if they were immutable. But technically, it is possible to change the contents of the object itself. This is called mutation. You can see here in the on click, I'm directly updating the object's properties rather than updating the object state itself. So here, doing this changes or mutates the original object value itself. But in React, changing or mutating the state directly is a problem because this prevents React from triggering a re-render. As you can see, if I click on the button, nothing changes. The text doesn't change. Because without using the state setting function, React has no idea that the object has changed. So React does not do anything in response. React wants a new value when you set state. That's how it gets to know via equality checks whether or not to do a re-render or to bail out and skip the re-render. If you mutate the object directly like in our case, then React skips the re-render, ultimately failing to update the state itself. React thinks you're still referencing to the same object in memory even though internally the values have changed. And that's why React requires states to be immutable. In other words, we don't mutate state if we want to change it. Instead, we make a copy of it and and replace the old state with the new copy. And that's what's called immutability. So the key point here is although objects in React state are technically immutable, you should treat them as if they were immutable. So instead of mutating them, you should always replace them. Now with that in mind, let's see the different ways to update an object state. In this example, we can simply replace this mutation by creating a new object and passing it to the state setting function. Doing this will allow React to know that the state has been updated on click and it can finally trigger a re-render. So now if I click on the button, you can see the text has been updated accordingly. Now another way to update the object state could be by copying objects with the spread syntax. In this example, the detail object is always created fresh upon button click. But often, you'll want to include existing data as a part of the new object you're creating. This usually comes in handy while working with forms where you may want to update only one field in a form but keep the previous values for all other fields. So let's say I wanted to change only the platform variable to Twitter on button click, but the other properties should remain the same. So in this case, you can simply use the spread syntax so that you don't need to copy every property separately and update only what's required. This is more clean and convenient, especially while working with huge form input data. Note that the spread syntax is shallow. It only copies things one level deep. This makes it fast, but it also means that if you want to update a nested property, you'll have to use it more than once. This brings up the question, how to update a nested object state in React? Consider this object here now. There's another object, metrics, nested within. And I'm displaying its properties within the paragraph tag here. Now what if I only want to update the subscriber's property of this object on button click? To do that, I could set the detail state on click, spread all the properties of the detail object, then select the metrics property, and first spread the details.metrics values within the metrics, then target the subscriber's property specifically and update its value to the desired one. If I click on the button now, you can see the value updates properly. Now although this works fine, it gets a bit too wordy and messy. So what's the other alternative to update a deeply nested object state? Well, you could either create a custom function that iterates through each individual property of the object and creates a new clone, or you could use external libraries that do the same job. You could either use Lodash or as recommended by the React docs, you can use Emmer. To use Emmer, first install Emmer and use Emmer as a dependency. Then import use Emmer. Replace the use state with use Emmer. And then in the on click within set detail, I'll use the draft that Emmer provides to update the specific property I want to update on button click, which is subscribers in this case. And now if I refresh and click on the button, you can see only the subscribers count changed and so everything works fine. Our nested object also updates easily and doing it with Emmer makes the code look so much cleaner as well. So the draft here is just a special type of object and under the hood, Emmer figures out which parts of the draft have been changed and produces a completely new object that contains our edits. So with that, we are done with this video. Those were the recommended ways to update an object state in React based on the recommendations from the React docs. That's all for the video. If you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe.